Hi, welcome back to Mrs O'Gram's Maths. Today we are looking at continuity corrections. Now, I need to take you back to thinking about discrete data versus continuous data for this one. And um, the distributions that we've looked at of normal uh, versus Poisson and binomial. Now, remember with a continuous distribution, we have... Um, a continuum of values, say we're going naught up to 10. Now a continuous distribution can take any of the numbers from naught to 10. So we could have a 1.7, a 3.2, or whatever. But the Poisson and binomial being discrete distributions, they can only take the whole numbers. So it could be a 5, or an 8, or a 1, but we can't have any numbers in between. We can only work out probabilities that sit on those whole numbers. But there are situations where we actually want to use the normal distribution and apply it to discrete data because it's easier to work with. This could be if we've got a large amount of data or rather the values go very big, um, which gets difficult if you're dealing with binomial and Poisson, which I just noticed I spelled binomial wrong, so I'm going to fix it. There we go. So sometimes you want to approximate the binomial and Poisson distributions using a normal one. Or there's perhaps discrete data that has been um, rounded and uh, we're using um, some something that's switched between this discrete and continuous data in our representation of it and so we need to be able to correct for that. Now as always this is easiest to explain with an example so that's what we're going to go do now. We've got the North American partridge that lays eggs which um, we can Define the number of eggs that are being laid by this partridge as being normally distributed with a mean of 22 and a standard deviation of 3. From there we can calculate some probabilities. Before we go on, let's just have a think about this though. The mean number of eggs, that is a discrete measure. But the normal distribution, that's continuous. So we have a little bit of discrepancy here. Um, where we're using a t continuous distribution to model something that's actually discrete because we can only count whole numbers of eggs. And this is where the continuity correction comes in. So let's have a think about this question here. If we are counting that they've laid between 18 and 24 eggs, and we pop that onto a sketch of our normal distribution like this, we come into a little bit of a problem because we've gone up to 18, but our continuous distribution could go any numbers between 17 and 19, any of the numbers. It could be 18.2, um, it could be 17.7. They would all have rounded to 18. So what we have to do is extend the limits that we're talking about here at the top and the bottom so that we include any number that would round to what we want. Now, if we're going between 18 and 24 eggs, um, that's implied that it's inclusive. In fact, I'm going to put that word in, which means we need to extend our limits so that we include the 18 and include the 24. So we want, we're want we going to be finding this area between, right? But we need to extend this down to 17.5 so that we get all of this bit here that also would have rounded to 18 when we take that continuous number um, and round it. And then on the other side, we need to go just to the outside of 24 to make sure that that gets included. That pushes us up to 24.5 so that it gets all of this bit that needs to get rounded to 24, everything up to 24.5. Now, of course, if we're going exactly on 24.5, we would round up to 25, but you can't call the limit 24.49 uh, recurring. You can't put that into a calculator. So we give it 24.5, um, and the tiny bit of difference there between 0.9 recurring and, and 0.5 doesn't make enough difference to affect our probability. So now we go ahead and put that into the normal distribution. And we write it like this. We're going from 17.5 up to 24.5. And that right there is your continuity correction. That 0.5 that we needed to adjust by to make sure we included what we would um, get if it got rounded to its whole numbers. OK, so I'm just going to pop that in the calculator. On my graphics calculator, I can put those values in straight away with our mean of 22 and our standard deviation of 3. And we get the answer of 0 0.7. 309. We're going to do a few more on this so that you can see exactly how this works. So, part B. What are what calculate the probability that a partridge lays more than 
uh, 24x. Okay, more than does not include 24. So when we're doing our little picture, we need to think about which way we go from 24. So here's our diagram. Well, that wasn't a very good curve. Here we go. Uh, here's our diagram. Here's 24. Now, if we're doing more than 24, it's got to be this side of 24, right? But we need to limit ourselves with that 0.5 for whether we want to include the 24 or not. So if we're going more than, we're going to the right. So we need to be just to the right of the 24 so that when we go more than, we don't include the 24 because it's got to be exactly more than 24. We can't include the 24 in there. So we get a 24.5 on this one. So we want to work out the probability that x is greater than 24.5. And putting that into the calculator, we get 0 0.23, uh, 0 0.2023. Right, what about at least 15 eggs? I'm trying to use all the different ways that this could be asked so you can interpret these ones. So at least 15 means we are going to include 15 and go above the 15, as in we want more than 15, right? So we've got um, this kind of picture here. If we want at least 15, that's 15 or more. So our 0.5, when we're thinking about do we go to the left or the right of 15, whatever we do, we need to end up that when we shade our more than, it's going to include the 15, which means that we need to drop it just below the 15 here. So that's 14.5. So that when we go more than 14.5, we're going to get that little slither there, plus all the things that are 15 and more. So we're going for probability that x is greater than 14.5, and pop that into the calculator, and we get 0 0.9938. All right, let's do one last one. So for no more than 20 eggs, we need to go everything up to and including the 20. So here's our 20. We're going to do everything up to and including 20 because it's no more than 20. So which side do I need to drop my half a point onto? So we're going up to and including. So we need to extend our line this way. So we're going 20.5 so that when we go everything up to 20.5, we will have included that 20. And then we're going to work out the probability that x is less than 20.5 is equal to 0.3085. So when you're doing these continuity correction um, questions, the thinking you need to do is, where's my original marker? Am I going more than or less than? And do I need to add on or take off a half to be able to either include the thing that I, I started with or not include it depending on what the question was asking you for.